are worried about trouble and ask for the news media's help in appealing for calm. They're worried about public reaction if a grand jury does not indict a white police officer in the shooting death of an unarmed black man. Why can't they just, you know, instead of burning things, destroying things, disrupting traffic, it's very rude. Instead of, you know, violence and protesting, they could, you know, is there education? Uh, I, don't, I don't think you can say that. Why? What? Don't go out there and do those things. You're talking about black people as if you're not black, as if we're not black. So, wow. Um, so I paid for school and you're, you're an activist. You think you can just talk back? Anyhow, I'm not being disrespectful. I'm just trying to understand what you're saying because like, what you're saying is not good. I can't believe I have to say this, but it's time to tell your African parents that Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Hey YouTube world, it's me Evelyn. I wrote what became this video back in 2015. I have a lot of discussions, mostly online. But by far the most hurtful and confusing ones were the ones that I had in real life with older African folks. This confusing brand of prejudice is something that really pains me and something that has got to go. So in this video, we got interviews, we got facts, we got figures. I'm getting my education on in hopes that I can encourage my fellow first-generation Americans to say it with your chest because we ain't got time, all right? We need to come together, stat, all right? Umoja and things of this nature. So what does it feel like to be black in the US? In America? Jesus. <laughs> You gotta laugh and cry. Um, a lot of things. There's a lot of emotions, I guess, that come with being black in the US. It can be really lit sometimes if you're among other black people. There are moments of beauty, you know, like when we watch the Olympics and we cheer for all the black people. I look at who is in power, replaced by our first black president. So I think it's an interesting time given the history. But now we're definitely like loud about it and and everyone's like being very unapologetically black. It's a job, man. It's a task. Uh, I was just talking to a friend the other day and we were talking about why I feel like rappers are always really good actors. That's because I feel like black people in general are just really good actors. It can feel suffocating at times. You're like a reflection of all your skin folk, basically. Like everything you do is representative of being a black person. I feel like my whole life I've lived two lives. Uh, what do they call that, double consciousness? I really enjoy like my culture, my experiences, but at the same time, sometimes I feel like I have to suppress myself, like my true self. You are an African child. And usually that means you have African parents. They are solid and stern and only sometimes sweet. But they are yours. So imagine you visited them for some quality time. Everything is going all right, business as usual. But then, things get a little weird. Hmm. Why do they do things like this, huh? Always, you know, sagging pants, just always being violent. Me, I work with a lady named Cheryl, she's African-American. She's not like that. There's another guy, Marcus. I work with him. He, he was telling me he thinks that boy provoked the cop. And really, you know, sometimes you really... You don't know. Wait. What? What? Whew. Child. Oh my God. Let's give it more context. Where did this begin? African immigration to the United States picked all the way up after the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965. Yes, this is a history lesson. Class is in session. 
Before that, things were based on a quota system that started in the 20s. So for example, they would let 50,000 Germans in, 30,000 immigrants from England, and those are countries. Girl, guess what the quota was for immigrants from the entire African continent in like 1929? 1100. Because of the act, all of that changed so much that you can basically split the course of African immigration to the US into before 1965 and after 1965. The act got rid of those quota systems because upstanding Americans suddenly realized that those quota systems were intolerable. Now what, pray tell, was happening in this country in the 60s that would make a president wanna act right? The Civil Rights Movement. Black US citizens fighting for their basic human rights in this country paved the way for legislation that inevitably allowed black folks from elsewhere to come here. According to the Pew Research Center, the number of African immigrants in the US has been steadily growing since 1970, with numbers pretty much doubling every decade. From 80,000 in 1970 to over 2 million in 2015, now that's not to say that coming into this country and getting into this country is easy, because it's not. I'm just saying, put some respect on their name. Uh, my experience with Africans growing up, minimal. First time, I think I was, was it 17 years old, I'd gone to South Africa for the first time with a group of African Americans and it was so, we're so happy to be back. You know, we're your African brothers and sisters. And they're like, What's your native language? What tribe are you from? So it wasn't as welcoming as we thought. We thought it was gonna be like, welcome home, here are your gifts, you know? Like, no. Uh -uh. My husband is Nigerian, he's first generation, um, Nigerian or Igbo, and um, they were not pleased <laughs> when he told them that he was, uh, when he told his family he was dating a black American. They were still feeling like he should have made more efforts to um, find another Igbo woman to like date and eventually marry. I was more concerned with how he was going to manage that. That's more important to me because people can't control what families they come from. It's just about how your spouse manages that relationship. And we're married now, so um, <laughs> it, it went well. Um, actually, older Africans love me. Um, <laughs> I am always, oh my daughter, how are you doing today? And it's like, I just feel welcomed into the fold, you know? So like, Ni Nigerian aunties love me. Um, Nigerian dads don't really talk a lot, so, <laughs> you know. I, I grew up with a lot of kids that were uh, African, some of them first generation, some of them weren't born here. Um, so I had a, a cool experience uh, in getting to get that diversity uh, from a very young age. Um, as I got older, it, it changed, especially when I went to college. My experience um, didn't start until I got in college and I just felt othered. I felt like I couldn't relate to them. I felt like I was less than, I didn't feel as intelligent. Well, I attended the University of Houston where uh, my assumption is most of the black population is Nigerian. <laughs> so it's like, whoa, that's, this is a, you know, it was a lot of, um, culture like take in, which I thoroughly enjoyed. When I went to college, and I remember there was a, uh, was it black African club or something like that? And I was like, I'm black, I could be in that, cause I kinda like, I mean, I don't know where I'm from, but you know, it's gotta be from some African country. And they were like, no, you can't join. And that's the first time I've been around black people and I they, I was not accepted. I got to meet a lot of people who were very, very cool and like, nah man, I, I greatly identify with black culture. Like we listen to the same music, we dress the same way, like you look like me, enough said. Um, and then I also met a lot of people who are a little uh, aristocratic. And then I realized, oh, some Africans think they're better than us. <laughs> And part of me kind of bought that. I was like, yeah, I mean, maybe they are better than black people. They have a culture and history that we don't have. I always, I wondered why. I was like, why do like certain Africans think they're better than black Americans? And I think it's because of the history. So yeah, what is that? That thing that our elders do to black people in the US? Sometimes I think that they kind of want to forget that there are parallel issues with black Americans here and Africans and home countries? Well, I like to blame the white man for everything. So, I mean, I definitely think there's um, there's this like, it's, it's a systematic thing. Like we're all taught to just hate each other. And I think 
The older African generation picked up on like anti-blackness and tried to distance themselves from it. I feel like the goal is once you move here, you need to rise above some of those certain stereotypes or some of those certain issues that are tied to color. The message that's been put in their head is all about like respectability. Like we worked really hard to come to this country and now it's all about being like a doctor, lawyer, engineer, whatever. It's all about education and anything that isn't like going towards that goal or anything that isn't like high class isn't good. You can thank Harvard professor Evelyn Brooks Higginbotham, yes, fellow Evelyn, for coining the term respectability politics. She first used this term back in 1993, and now it refers to the notion that if people just acted better, better being a completely arbitrary set of rules set by the people abusing them, that you would get treated better. What? Hundreds of years of propaganda don't just go away. So it's a hard thing to shake for it, even if the person looks like you. So what our parents or grandparents or aunts or uncles or people in our community do is see those images and they're like, oh, that's, that's what it means to be black. That's what black people are or African-American, whatever you want to call it. If you, if you associate yourself with blackness in that way, then you're also associating, you're getting dirty with all the ugliness, that, the ugly stereotypes that come of being black in America. So like, if you have black friends, then maybe your kids won't be as smart. They won't try as hard in school. They won't take math and science seriously. Um, maybe they'll want to be rappers, you know? If you're being taught that this is what's right, and then all these images are being fed to you about what's wrong about these people, even if they look like you, like you're gonna, you're gonna internalize that too. One major problem with that is that it shifts the blame of treating someone badly onto the oppressed, not the oppressor. The other problem with respectability politics is that they don't work. I distinctly remember having a Harvard educated, sometimes corny sounding, okay, biracial black president. And folks wasn't necessarily jumping for joy at the chance to respect him. I mean, folks elected a hot Cheeto afterwards. So where did respectability get us? And I ain't got no masters, okay? All I know is that every judgmental is a chance for us to step up and help our African parents or elders understand the ways in which they're perpetuating white supremacy. Yeah, I said it. Oh my God, I'm a woke YouTuber now. I'm a woke YouTuber now. I get people wanting to retain their culture. Like maybe not, I don't want you to be considered black because of these negative stereotypes, even if I'm woke enough to recognize that that's ridiculous. Maybe I just don't want you to lose your culture. And so I get that, but I also very much grew up wanting to make that gap smaller because you may be from Kenya, but to them, you look like you're from Atlanta. They don't give a shit.